Hello everyone, this is Data from JGX and here we are with another Mac review. Today we are going to talk about the Atlas. Before we get started, if you haven't done that yet, please remember to subscribe. It does a great difference for me. Okay, so as for the agility, the agility is very high for an assault. Not only for a 100 tonner, but for the assaults in general. Like the agility is very, very, very high. Axel Diesel 2021, if you compare this with an Annihilator, a Fafnir, a Darwolf, they have like half. A Kodiak, even less. For example, Kodiak 3, he's only at 9 and 14. Darwolf is at 10, 14. Um, Annihilator is at 9 and 14 again. The Atlas is at 20, 21. Turn rate again very high. Most of the assaults, like the 100 toners, the very big ones, are around 35, 40. Medkit Mark II is around 35. Blood Asp is 40. Torso turn rate again very, very fast. 108 is a lot of torso turn rate. Uh, Darwolf has 67, uh, Annihilator should be something similar, 58, so 108 is a lot of torso turn rate, it means that the, this mech will torso twist very fast. Also, your angle is pretty high, most mechs have like 90 degrees, no more, pitch is common, like 25, uh, before, before the cauldron, like for a lot of years, the Atlas... Um, had lower pitch compared to other max, but now it has 25, like most of the other assaults. So agility is surely a big plus for this mech. As for the armor, uh, the armor is the same on all the variants. Uh, it has a lot of armor. This mech is a tank. As for the ability to uh, tank the shots, this mech has wide arms. Therefore, once you torso twist, the arms are going to tank for the torsos. Uh, the CT does not uh, exit forward a lot. So the arms tank for the side torsos, and the side torsos tank for the CT, which is great. So basically, this is the perfect shape uh, to tank. Other mechs don't have this kind of shape. For example, a worse shape could be considered this one. The arms are not shielding for the side torsos. The side torsos are not shielding for the CT. This is a bad shape. This instead is a good shape in terms of tanking. As for the quirks, we have readjusted them, trying to make them work more or less. Um, something that hasn't... I'll start from the Atlas R RS because it received something in December. People haven't noticed it at all. Uh, we have been adding a laser HSL plus one on the RS. Um, I didn't mention crit chance receiving. Crit chance receiving uh, basically um, makes it so that you will get less crits not only on your structure but also on your weapons. So you will be less likely to lose weapons or to get your structure uh, chewed out faster. Uh, so we're starting from the Atlas RS. Uh, a lot of laser-based quirks and a good laser HSL plus one. This means that you could put four lasers, because in a sphere usually yeah, large, a large pulse, it's max 3, no ghost. Regular large laser, pointless because it's for no ghost by default. Um, so I went for large pulses. If only I could find my Atlas RS, okay. Uh, I went for large pulses. Uh, 15 double heat sinks are enough to run them. Uh, you could add an AC20 or an ultra AC20. The reason why I went for heavy gauze is heat. 
Uh, I think that the amount of quarks it has on heat, the amount of heat sinks you are able to, to squeeze in it, um, don't justify extra weapons with uh, big heat consumption ratios. So the damage per heat of the heavy go, I went heavy goes because of damage per heat in this case, because I think that the heat sinks are already dedicated to my large pulses. If I put like an, another weapon in this specific case, um, my loadout would require uh, a lot more heat dissipation. I could try to go some, to do something like this, like an Ultra 20, but it would desync with large pulses. The Ultra 20 is lower. Uh, I could try, I can't even put an LFE because of slots, I think. There you go. Uh, I could try a faster engine, but again, this mech is too hot. Okay, I'm faster, but it's too hot. So we will stick with the heavy gauze setup. It's pointless to have Giga Alphas if then you can't use them. So it's better to have a, a good Alpha, but you, you be sure that you can use it repeatedly. So this one, I can, you can fire as, as much as you want. Okay, uh, so now that we are done with LSS, uh, RS, we can go to the other variants. Next one uh, I'm going to talk about is um, a brawling one, the Kraken. alongside the S. I think these two are the best for brawling. Some people would put something like this. I see a lot of people saying that the Atlas should be fit in this way. They put smaller engine and they try to squeeze in snub noses by reducing the SRMs like this. SRM 4, 4, 4. And then they go with snubs. Like this. The problem with this setup that a lot of people actually use is again that you don't have enough double heat sinks to run this one efficiently. So once you go past a certain threshold, by adding more weapons, uh, you're not actually improving your mech, you're making it worse. Because yes, this one will have a big, bigger alpha strike. We don't even have four SRMs. But once you alpha strike a couple of times, you're done. And in a brawl, you can't afford that you need to be able to shoot consistently. Because I like to put myself in best case scenario in which I actually, it's actually worst case scenario. Like when I have to kill two, three, four mechs in a row, best case scenario, if you think that you're farming, yes. But if you have to deal with two, three, four mechs, it's worst case scenario. And you need a lot of heat efficiency to deal with a lot of mechs and carry the game. So I prefer builds that can shoot a lot more with slightly less alpha. Actually, not that much less. It's just that uh, I prefer to go to, for small lasers because these are underestimated. Like the damage per heat of, sm of small lasers is absurd. If you multiply this damage for four weapons or five for the, Atl the other Atlas, it's actually a lot of damage. It's as if you, if you are doing like extra 15 or 20 damage with no heat consequences on top of being faster and having still a respectable alpha. 
this is how it would play. So to me, all of those builds that alpha strike like one, twice, once, twice, and then they overheat, and they don't have enough heat sinks to dissipate, I think they're all bad. This one instead is good. Again, the torso twist is fast. The small lasers are just egg free 15 damage with no hit consequences. So you want these. It's basically an extra auto cannon 20, auto cannon 15, let's call it that way, that you have for, for no consequences. And then you have all the rest. Damage per hit is very high. Once you fire a cool shot, it will last a lot and you'll be able to keep firing a lot. Another good one is the Hero Atlas, the KR. Similar usage. It has, I think, a little bit more quirks, generic quirks. It, it has overall more quirks than this one, but it has less missiles. So uh, given that you have just two missiles, you bring two good ones and an extra small lasers. It works pretty much in the same way. I think they are both good. The concept is the same. The difference is that with this one, your MRMs have some mid-range. So you are able to deal some damage even at mid-range, although I think that these mechs should be used uh, with hiding techniques. You should hide, come out at mid-game and face fuck people. Another good one is the loyalty one, the one they gave uh, as a loyalty bonus. The difference with the other atlases is that it can put two ballistics, two energy on the same side and it has velocity. Uh, it has jump chits, but jump chits on 100 tonners are useless, just a waste of tonnage. It also has ECM, so given that you can put weapons on the same side, you have ECM you can be fast. This is actually a good all-around mech. Uh, I like having weapons put this way because of geometry convergence. Uh, this is a good way to have your weapons because once you try to lead the shot on a fast-moving mech, uh, the bullets will all fly together. Instead, if they come a bit from the right, a bit from the left, they will flip-flop left and right and you'll end up missing the target even if you aimed correctly because some weapons will go to the right of the enemy and some weapons will go to the left of your enemy. This way, instead, they have a good convergence. Not in terms of velocity only, but in terms of geometry convergence. Uh, let's go on the battlefield. As for the skill trees, I'm not showing them because I did a separate video or discussing skill trees, trying to teach you how to understand why a certain skill is good for a certain mech. So rather than keep spamming, oh, this is a skill tree for this, for that, for that, I try to, uh, to give you the tools to understand by yourself how to create um, a good skill tree. So just go to watch my videos on the skill trees. Uh, this is good for sight peeking, ECM. Uh,
Another good one is the K. I think the K is slightly better at doing an AC20 and three snub nose. Uh, again, why an AC20 and three snub nose and not AC20, three snub nose and something else? Because I prefer to maximize the output of that loadout rather than putting other weapons that would just chew my heat dissipation without any benefit. Like, what, what would I do? I, I could downgrade the engine like this, downgrade the heat sinks, put an MRM 30, an MRM 20 with a couple of tons of ammo, but again, I have less heat sinks, so my sustained DPS is less. Uh, although you can argue that this one consumes my heat in a better way than these ones, so I gain a little bit more sustained if I fire one of these instead of one of these. But again, I have less double heat sinks, bad sink, slower mech. I think it isn't worth. So on the K, I just go with three snub nose and an AC20. Perfect sync in terms of cooldown, decent sync in terms of velocity. This is the reason why I like a lot of heat sinks. Because you must keep shooting once you're on a brawl. And then the other, ah, we left the boar set. Another good one is the boar set. Uh, now it has a lot of quirks on energy. Uh, range, heat. Uh, I think it's safe to build it with the R largest. It's, it's strange, but I think it's the way to go for the boar set. A general rule when you're setting the Mac is that if you find out that your double heatsink build has identical heat management of your standard heatsink build, the standard heatsink build is colder. Because this one, it's as if it doesn't consider the heat capacity. So if I have 1.46 expressed in double heatsinks, it is slightly hotter because it is not considering counting properly the heat capacity, that is how really big the bar is, saying dissipating 4 heat per second, but having a bar that is tall 40, or dissipating same, 4 heat per second, but the bar instead is, eight, is, is tall 80, it is a significant difference. And this thing down here doesn't count it. So if I could go double heat sinks, it's 1 and 46. I could go double heat sinks. I should remove endo, because otherwise they wouldn't fit. I could increase the engine to have an extra heat sink in the CT, and I wouldn't even reach 146. So definitely on this Mac, it is better to have standard heat sinks. You could unlock the arms, honestly, to deal with something that is up close. This may actually be a better version of the supernova, something that people haven't understood yet.
destroyed. As for the other two, we have the DDC with ECM, which you which is basically a shittier brawling atlas with ECM. You want that just if you want to brawl with a shittier one, but say, hey, I have ECM. Uh, I think it doesn't work, because in order to be uh, not detected, uh, you would need both ECM nodes, and you would take them out of the heat efficiency or out of the armor, so it's a stupid idea. Uh, that's why I think that for brawlers like ECM doesn't work. So I don't use the DDC. The D is a whatever all around one. You can go like literally whatever double MRM, small lasers, AC20, double LBX. It, it's a jolly one. Uh, the ones I like the most are this one for independent solo game because it has ECM, long range, it's fast. Good peak. This one is good as well, but it's more dependent on teammates because it's wide, doesn't have ECM, it's slow. Uh, this one is strong for brawl, same as this one. The, the MRM AC20, the SRM spam, both very good for brawl. Uh, the snub nose AC20, the K, is good for brawl as well. I think the DDC and the D, I mean, even the D could do uh, a good three snubs and an AC20. Let's see. With slightly better AC20 cooldown, but the K has energy cooldown, energy range. The D doesn't have energy cooldown and energy range. It's better to do this on the K, but it would work on the D as well. Uh, I think we're done. We covered all of them. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, again, please, if you haven't done that yet, remember to subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time.